Synergy Fuel Site Controller Configuration The Synergy FSC is configured through DX Fleet. If you're familiar with configuring an FSC 3000 using Artware and managing cards with Phoenix, this should be very familiar. Setup is very similar, but everything is just in a different place. Your organization and sites will be set up by the SAS team. A subscription form is given to the customer and they have to submit contact, organization, and site info to onboard the sites. This is the dashboard. From here you'll be able to see different information about your organization and sites. We can select our different sites from the drop down over here at the top. We've got training site 1, 2, and 3. We're going to go ahead and select training site 1. We can see that we currently don't have any pumps or fits, uh, anything enabled on this site, so we're going to go ahead and program all of that. To start off with, we want to change global settings. So we'll go to settings and system configuration. This is going to change things system wide, and this will apply to all the sites that we have in our organization. First off, we want to go ahead and enable proprietary card file management. And then we have a choice of selecting a single entry system or dual entry system. We're going to go ahead and select dual entry system. And we want to allow the use of single entry records under the dual entry system. And if you go to the right over here, you get little tool tips that tell you what each entry can do. For example, this one is going to allow you to enter either a driver or a vehicle card, or you can enter both of them if you want at the same time. So if someone pulls up to fuel, they can either enter in their card or they can enter in their card and a vehicle card. Next up, we're going to allow a security code. This is basically a passcode that someone can enter in to allow them to fuel. We're going to set the card and validate after three bad entries. That way if someone enters in a code three times the wrong way, then it's going to disable their card. You can also set an expiration date and days of the week for fueling that's allowed. Let's go ahead and enable that and also time of day fueling. You've got tiered pricing, number of transactions per day. We'll go ahead and select that. Uh, product and quantity restrictions, we want to enable that. And standard prompting will do just fine for us right now. If you have Gas Boy, you can go ahead and check this to make sure that you can format the cards for the proprietary card file for Gas Boy. And go ahead and click Save. If you do not click Save, all of the changes that you just made will not be saved. This is just letting you know that you are only saving the configuration. You are not sending it to your sites. So if you want to send this configuration to your sites, you need to click Update PCF Configuration in the Settings menu. Go ahead and click OK. OK, everything's been saved. Now we're going to move on to Products. And you can see here that we've got everything set for gallons for unit 1, liters for unit 2, and quarts for unit 3. And we can go ahead and go to Type. Now here you can change the name of your product. We'll go ahead and change the name of Unleaded Regular to Unleaded Regular 87 so that we know that it's 87 octane. And you can set a default price here and then this will filter into all of your sites and then you can change the pricing on each individual site as well. So now that I've made that change, I'm gonna click Save. And you can see that our Unleaded Regular Fuel 87 has been saved now. Now we can go on to product and quantity restrictions. Uh, for this, you need to set up a group that restrictions get placed into. So let's go ahead and call our first group 87 only. And we'll add it. It's going to add it to the current groups. And then we want to select the group that we want to add restrictions to. And your restrictions are down here. You've got all of your different fuel types and then quantities next to them. So this one is unleaded regular at 20 gallons. This is unleaded regular at 36 gallons. So let's say we just want to allow unleaded regular at 20 gallons. And then what we need to do is we need to move it up here to the product quantity level so that it's on the same tier as our group over here. So we'll move that up. And now we can see that it populated over here. That means that 87 only will only be able to fill 20 gallons of unleaded regular. Can go down and hit save. 
Prompt Pools is a new feature available on Synergy that allows you to push additional prompts to terminals on fueling. Users need to validate something based off of these prompts. You can create a prompt pool and then create pool entries that will be accepted to begin fueling. We'll go ahead and give an example. Go to Enter Prompt Pool and we will type in the prompt pool name and we will call it 2 plus 2. Go ahead and add it and make sure that you select your 2 plus 2 and the prompt pool entry will be 4. And we'll go ahead and save this. It's letting you know that there's a warning that prompt pools must be uploaded to your site controller if the cards are configured to use them. If not, any new entries won't be confirmed to the site when the driver fuels. And click OK. Let's go ahead and click our 2 plus 2. And we can see that 4 shows up right there. So a user will need to answer the number 4 if they want to fuel if we apply this prompt pool to their account. Receipt body, user string, and card status, uh, we usually use those as default, so we don't need to change anything there. So now we can go ahead and move on to sites. We'll go to settings and sites, and these are the different sites that we have. We're gonna go ahead and configure training site one. So to configure training site one, go ahead and click on the pencil. Now once we're in here, you get tabs on the left to help you with your configuration. So the first thing that is selected is the site details. And you can see that we have a site name, short name, uh, organization, and address. All this information is added by the SAS team, so you're not going to be able to change any of this. The next thing that we want to do is go ahead and move on to controller. Now it's time to set up the controller. We want to go ahead and move over to the Petronet port settings. So we're going to change this to COM1, which is the COM1 port on the Synergy unit, and the baud rate is going to be 9600. This is standard for almost all Petronet devices that you'll be connecting to it. And you want to go ahead and enable Petronet logs. This is good for diagnostics. You want to make sure that you have that enabled too. And additional options, if you want to enable odometer entry at the fit, go ahead and click enable that our display type make sure that you go ahead and select that as graphics and if you have multiple languages you can able, enable dual language go ahead and save and send now we're going to go all the way down to the bottom and we're going to configure our terminals so go ahead and click on terminals now terminal controller is going to be if you're using in dispenser terminals we're using fuel island terminals so we'll go ahead and select terminals right here See. Now we'll go ahead and create a new terminal and by clicking plus our terminal ID. This will be the number one terminal. This is the address of the terminal set on the terminal and we'll go ahead and select PV 200 and our decline timeout is going to be the time that it is declined and the pump times out and the user will have to start the fueling process again. We'll set that to 15, which is our standard. For prompt timeout, we will go ahead and select 15 seconds. This is the amount of time that a user has between completing actions on the fuel island terminal before it times out. Uh, reader error, we're not going to enable that. For the display type, we have graphics since it's a PV200. Receipt counter, we don't have to worry about that. We need to make sure that this unit is installed and we have keyboard access. Keyboard length is the number of digits for your card entry. So we're going to go ahead and select six here. That's a standard. We want to be able to issue receipts. Uh, in general, it's a good idea to not let users get unlimited receipts because then they will have to go through all of the receipts that they've ever generated in order to get the most recent ones. So it's a good idea to use days to receive receipts. And we like to use three days as a good default. Uh, pump access, this allows you to limit access to only certain pumps. And you can go ahead and check this and then you would just enter in the number of pumps that you want people to access. So this would be pump one, two, three, and five. Uh, but we're not going to check that. So with all these settings set, go ahead and click save. 
and you can see that our information has been saved here. Let's move along to the message. So the message for the site terminals is going to allow you to change all the standard messaging. Uh, the one thing that we are going to change is prompt number seven. This is the idle rotating messages. It rotates between seven and eight. So it'll say welcome Petro Vent and Fuel Control and then insert card and it'll just rotate those messages. So we're gonna go ahead and change number seven. So you click edit the pencil button on the right. All right, to break this down, we can see here that the T is going to mean that the unit is gonna display the time at the top and G is the row for which the next text will be displayed. Uh, a being one, B being two. So G is going to be row eight. Uh, let's go ahead and leave the welcome alone. And we're going to change Petrovend to say training. And row J, we're going to have it say site one. And we'll go ahead and click save. So now it will say welcome training site one. Let's go back to terminals at the top left and we'll go ahead and click on receipt. So this is going to be the header and trailer of the receipt that gets printed out at the fit. So we can go in here and change this to our liking uh, for language one. Let's go ahead and change this to training test. I'll just say training. test site one and we'll leave the other two lines the same and we'll go ahead and click save and now that will be at the top of the receipt so if we want to change anything on the trailer we can click receipt trailer and we'll just go ahead and change this to say thanks and you want to add another space or two over here to try to keep this aligned and then let's just go ahead and add in the tech support phone number, which is 1-800-OPW-TECH. And we'll click save. And that'll be at the bottom of the receipt. Now that we've configured all of our terminals, messages and receipts, let's move on to tanks and pumps. First thing we wanna do is go ahead and enter in our tanks. And this is going to allow us to configure our pumps later. So we have to configure these first. Let's go ahead and add in a new tank. We'll have tank number one. Uh, tank ID is number one. And product type, let's give it that unleaded regular 87. And go ahead and click save. And let's go ahead and add another tank. We'll have this as tank two. Tank ID two. And this will be diesel number one. Go ahead and click save. Now we're going to move on to pump controller. Let's go ahead and add a pump controller. We're not using DPC because we are only using proprietary cards. So we're not going to have any uh, in dispenser terminals or in dispenser uh, fueling. Let's leave DPC off. We're going to leave DPC off because we are using. We're going to. We're going to leave DPC off and we want to make sure that this pump controller is installed. Uh, this will be a regular PCM and let's give it controller ID number one. And we want to allow hose restrictions. We don't have the option to allow hose restrictions. So let's go ahead and just click save. All right. And let's let, all right. And let's add one more PCM. Make sure it's installed and controller ID is number two. All right, now we go ahead. Now we can go ahead and add our pumps. Go ahead and click the plus to add a new pump. And this is going to be PCM number one. We'll have position one, pump number one. Make sure it's installed. We do want to use pump sentry max quantity this is going to be our un unleaded fuel so let's go ahead and give a max quantity of 20 because we don't want them fueling more than 20 gallons in their vehicle for pulses per unit 
we'll do 100, which is the standard. For the timeouts, we'll go ahead and set 120 seconds for the handle timeout. Uh, missing pulses, we'll go ahead and set 30. For the first pulse, we'll do 120 again. And for the fueling time in minutes, we'll do 10 minutes total. And for our product type, make sure that regular 87 is selected. That is coming from tank one. Uh, we don't have the totalizer and total values and there is no AVI system in place, so we're not using RFN. Go ahead and click save. And you can see here that everything that we've entered in has been saved. Now we wanna add our diesel pump, so click plus again. And this is pump controller two. And this is position one. And pump one. You wanna make sure it's installed and uses pump sentry. For maximum quantity here, let's do 100 gallons. That's gonna be 100 pulses per unit. And we'll do the same timeouts over here. 120 for handle and missing pulse is 30. First pulse 120 and for our fueling time we want to go ahead and crank that up so uh, let's go ahead and give 20 minutes for the fueling time. Now we want to make sure that we change our product type to diesel and that's going to be coming out of tank number two and go ahead and click save. Now we have all of our pumps set up. And that's it for a basic configuration of a Synergy fuel site controller.